Hi guys, well welcome back. It's the 10th of January 2016. So Happy New Year to everybody and today I want to start back into the review of the Sunday Times once again. So I have the business pages here from today. This is uh, Sunday Times business section today. Quite a few very interesting articles today to get your teeth into. Uh, primarily focusing on oil prices obviously, um, the turmoil in the financial markets which we observed on Monday and the goings on in China and what's, what on earth is actually happening in China. So let me just take, <coughs> excuse me, let me just take a few of those in turn for you. Before we start, let me just give you the numbers for CPI, for RPI and for the current unemployment rate. So CPI, Consumer Price Index, currently standing at 0.1%. RPI, Retail Price Index, currently standing at 1.1%. And unemployment standing currently in the UK at 1.17 million or 5.2%. So first article I want to look at is an article, uh, I think it's on the front front page of the business pages called City Traders and it is uh, highly relevant to those of you who will be involved in the Bank of England competition in uh, November of this year because it's talking about whether or not the base rate which has been at 0.5% since March 2009 this unprecedented low level of base rates in the UK Talk is now in the city that this will not increase at least until February 2017. So it was predicted, as you know, to rise maybe back end of 2016, but now forecasters are saying maybe that might be even pushed back to February 2017. And the reason for that is something which David Smith hints at in his article really to do with globalization and the slowdown in global economic growth, the continuing slide in oil prices down to $33 a barrel earlier this week. Now that's the lowest they have been since 2004. And there are one or two articles in the business pages talking about North Sea oil uh, explorers in North Sea uh, saying that it's just no longer financially viable for them and a very wealthy individual who's just put up his company for sale uh, having started it in 2001 made fortunes over the last number of years but just it's no longer financially viable um, so yeah that, that's the the first of those articles of course we saw on Monday the um, the shocks really in the Chinese economy reverberating around the financial markets across the globe David Smith then goes on to talk about uh, George Osborne's comments in the press earlier in the week with regard to the fact that the UK economy is facing what he referred to as a toxic cocktail. Public finances still, although the, you know, the economy is growing well, inflation is low, unemployment is falling, public finances are still very, very, um, they're still in a bad condition really. Currently forecasted to be borrowing £70 billion this year. Now, of course, when the uh, coalition government came in in uh, 2010, they borrowed £150 billion in their first year. So it is coming down, but obviously £70 billion, 70 billion excuse me, is nothing to be, certainly not to be sneezed at. This comes at a time when economic forecasts around the globe are being revised downwards. Those of you who've been uh, in my sixth one this week, we've been looking at globalization and this whole notion as to whether or not globalization and the fact that globalization promotes growth, is that growth simply going to keep going and going and going and growing and growing and growing? Well, clearly, especially if you read David Smith's article, that is not the case. Global growth forecasts around the world are all in the slide. And again, David Smith commenting about the oil prices. Indeed, Dave Smith points out something very relevant, which I was talking to the uh, leadership and management group about earlier this week. 
Global oil prices, of course, are on the slide because there is such an excess supply of oil around at the moment. However, in the past, had the um, tensions arisen between Iran and Saudi Arabia in the way in which they have done in the last week or so with the beheadings and so on in Saudi Arabia, something which David, Com David Cameron commented on in the Andrew Marr programme this morning, but had these um, tensions arisen in the past, that would, of course, have caused the oil price to rise and to spike. But David Smith is pointing out that in spite of the fact that we've got these tensions in Iran and Saudi Arabia and between these oil producing nations, the oil prices have continued to slide, not to rise. And so further pointing out that expectations in the markets and for oil traders are that the continuing excess supply of oil is looks set to keep growing and growing and growing. Third article, really interesting one with regard to China. It's talking about the, the Chinese regime, really, uh, uh, the leading communist party, and the fact that they are happy to embrace free market economics up to a point, and that point is really once start things going wrong. And of course, we've seen in the last week or so, particularly on Monday, where the Chinese stock market it was open for a grand total of 890 seconds, which is the shortest period of opening since it actually opened in China in 1990. And then we saw the global um, reverberations, and in the FTSE 100, 370 billion pounds was wiped off the FTSE 100 in only 30 minutes. This whole notion of systemic risk, again, is something which we've been talking about uh, not only in the lectures I've been doing on globalisation, but also in our studies of globalisation recently. So it's a great article uh, in that respect. Yeah. And it also talks about the fact that not only did the Chinese government, the state, immediately intervene and close the markets down, but they've also then started to intervene in the foreign exchange market. And because growth forecasts in China are on the slide, then the yuan, the renminbi, is being sold off in vast quantities. And the Chinese administration have been intervening very, very substantially in the foreign exchange markets, using up their reserves of foreign currency in order to buy up their own currency in order to shore it up. And it's in this article, it says that they spent $108 billion alone last month trying to shore up the currency. And that's a great, it's a great article, that, because we could use demand and supply analysis by way of exchange rates diagrams in order to explain how that actually works. And then finally, there's just an interesting article at the end with regard to the fact that Sainsbury, UK's second largest um, supermarket retailer has drawn up plans to buy Argos and Homebase and the article goes on to explain that they're hoping to be able to compete in some way with Amazon by venturing into these new markets with the acquisition of Argos and Homebase. So that's it uh, for today ladies and gentlemen I look forward to bringing this to you again in the months and weeks ahead so we'll leave it at that for the time being and uh, see you next week.